Hello, I am John Welch, CEO at Making Fun. This is our second Eternium Unity development update, and it's the first one where it's starting to actually look like the live game. Uh, I captured the footage you're about to see from a development build on my Android phone. We are also playing on PC, Mac, and iOS already. Um, what you're going to see first is a placeholder character selection screen. Uh, it's the only place where we have the Eternium music playing in the app, and I was super excited the first time I heard the soundtrack playing in a brand new app, so I wanted to share it with you. Okay, here we go. This should look familiar. Here you can see the hometown with the various NPCs. The only thing working here is the gate. Let's play. This is the exact level one from the live game recreated in Unity. The various textures and 3D objects or props are the exact same assets as in the live game. We wrote import tools to bring them from the Marmalade environment into Unity. Everything else is new. For example, how the character moves and attacks, how the enemies behave, and the lighting and shaders that create the mood, including the look of the moving water. Of course, these are still works in progress, with the art team experimenting to get things looking at least as good as in the live game, and to leverage Unity's advanced features to make improvements where possible. While a ton of work has been done, there is still a lot of polishing required before it will look right. For example, if you look carefully at the beginning of the video, you'll see the fireball coming from the mage's stomach, not his outstretched hand. The gameplay interface is also placeholder, although you can get a sense for where we are going style-wise. Overall, the way development works is we get things working technically before we polish the functionality or make them look pretty. So you can cast a fireball and it will auto-fire until the target is dead, uh, but it will not yet hop to the next target. You can draw a rune to cast Immolate or Frost Nova, which generally do the right thing, but what you're seeing are placeholder visual effects currently. One cool note about the gesture inputs, the source code for that was pretty well encapsulated in the Marmalade version. One of our senior engineers, Ismail Schallenberg, was able to leverage ChatGPT to do the initial translation from C++ to C Sharp. He saved several days producing final code in about a day that otherwise would have taken him three to four days. Unfortunately, most of the code cannot be ported in this fashion because the two environments are just too different. Uh, but we'll have our eyes open for more opportunities like this. Uh, and in fact, I just heard of another example from one of our other engineers that might make it into our next development update. Uh, the last thing we want to do is implement all of the game balancing, so that damage is exactly what you would expect for a given character type and level and using a certain spell or a set of items. Uh, we have access to the numbers in the live game, so we know exactly what the target state is, but everything about how the numbers are stored and manipulated is different with the new version. Okay, so after watching this video, I hope you're taking away, wow, this is starting to look like Eternium, and not, uh, it doesn't look as good as the live game, what are they up to? So we've come a long way in a short amount of time, but we still have a lot more work to do before you're going to see something that looks as good as the live game, and hopefully, even better. Thanks.